Hi, this is Kay from Flawless Food, and you're listening to Eat Blog Talk. Hey, food bloggers, are you ready to accomplish your 2023 goals faster than you ever thought possible? If you are nodding your head yes right now, the Eat Blog Talk Mastermind program might be a great fit for you. We are now accepting applications for 2023, and I will let you in on a little secret. If you sign up before the end of November 2022, you can lock in at the current pricing. Go to eblogtalk.com forward slash mastermind for more information and to apply. Here is current mastermind member Kim from kickassbaker.com talking about one of the biggest benefits she has received from being inside the group. And I think just that transparency and willingness to be open and sharing for the pure benefit of somebody else's success has been a big surprise to me. For me, I that's a big part of like who I am too, is I'm very much interested in helping other people succeed, but it's been like very equal, you know, like there's just a very equal amount of giving and taking, sharing and sharing and sharing for other success. And other people are so willing to share what has worked for them purely to help other people succeed. Hello, food bloggers. Welcome to eBlog Talk, the podcast for food bloggers looking for the value and confidence that will move the needle forward in your business. This episode is sponsored by Rank IQ. I am your host, Megan Porta, and you're listening to episode number 354. I have Kay Ratford with me today. She is going to talk to us about using SEO to build organic traffic quickly. Kay is one of the bloggers behind Flawless Food. She and Luke are a UK-based recipe blog that has been around for two and a half years and has grown to over 400,000 page views per month, of which 250K is organic traffic. Luke and Kay are a busy couple juggling the blog with another full-time job while homeschooling two children. Kay, it is such a pleasure to have you here today. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh, thank you. I'm very excited to be here. Before we get into... SEO and building traffic. Do you have a fun fact to share with us? Yeah, I do. So this time next year, in two days time, me and Luke are going to be getting married. Oh, congratulations. That's exciting. Where where will you be getting married? We're getting married in the rural countryside of Essex in a, well, it's actually a former royal residence of a French king, actually. Oh my. But yeah. So yeah, we're looking forward to that. Something to look forward to. That sounds amazing. Wow. (laughs) Well, cool. (laughs) I am super excited to talk about this today because we all want that traffic, right? We all want to grow our traffic. That's one of the main goals for many, many food bloggers who run their blogs as a business. So you and Luke have figured out a way to get some really good organic traffic to your site and in a really quick time frame. So how did you get to the point where you realized that this was the route you needed to focus on? Just kind of talk us through your blogging journey real quick. Yeah, okay. So we first started, we we originally wasn't going down the blogging route. We originally started off doing sponsored work for brands because I've got another full-time job that I still do. And they were giving us some sponsored work for one of the brands. So that was the original job was to do sponsored work and then it was through learning about that and speaking to some other bloggers um, that we realized that you could actually earn money from from running a food blog it was uh do you know nikki nikki at kitchen sanctuary okay yeah she's got um she's got a second blog called living the blog where she writes all about like her journey um, and me and Luke sat reading that one for ages. And um, that's when like reality hit that this is actually a potential job rather than than just doing brand work. You can actually do your own recipes and earn money from it. And we're, we were quite excited about doing that. So after reading Nikki's uh, Living the Blog posts, we decided to... So that was August 2019. And it was in November 2019 that we decided to actually make a blog and we signed up at food blogger pro uh we become a member at food blogger pro and we've got lots of advice from them we had a little wix site that we had created so we obviously got rid of that and made it into a wordpress site got all the recipe card plugins and everything that we needed but we didn't 
have any dates or anything in mind. We didn't know how long it was going to take to, to, to reach our goals, but we just soaked up any information we can get from, obviously, from your pod- podcast helped us a lot. We've also listened to the Blogging Millionaire and uh, Food Blogger Pro podcast. So, yeah, we listen to all of them and get as much information as we can. Uh, we were also a member of the Food Blogger Central Facebook group. So we found that quite helpful. We didn't, we don't post much in there, but generally if you've got a question, you just type it into the search and it, it someone else has probably had the problem that yes. you have. So we just, we just tend to search. And I think I've typed a few things on there, but yeah, generally I, I just use the search and I find the information that I need to find out. And then there's Casey Markey, who's also on that group. Mm-hmm. I find his information really, really good. And I always look for his answers because I think he knows what he's talking about. Well, he does know what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yes, we started off just cooking off, cooking what we enjoyed cooking and, and our recipes that, that the kids enjoy and the family enjoy. We love traveling. So we, we also used to sort of replicate food that we would have abroad and then make it with like ingredients you could find from UK supermarkets. But we soon realised, it didn't take us long to realise that if something's not being searched, then there's no point writing about it. Mm -hmm. And some of our earlier recipes, which, you know, we were doing it more for what we wanted rather than what people wanted. Right. And I think that was a big turning point for us. Yes. No, I love how you just kind of dove in and decided that you needed to absorb all of the information. You've gone to all the right sources, it sounds like, listened to the right people and the right info. And then you dove into this SEO to build your organic traffic very quickly. So talk more about your recipes. So you came to the realization that you need to make recipes that people are actually searching for. So how do you do that? We do, well, I, I do a lot of keyword research. I really enjoy doing it. But the, the main two things is to obviously find a recipe that people are actually searching for. And secondly, to make sure that we can actually rank for the recipe that they're searching for. And I, to do that, I use, I've played around over the years with different keyword research tools. I've used Keywords Everywhere, which is a free one. I've used SEM Rush. Hrefs, Surfer SEO, and Rank IQ. They're all they're all brilliant. I would recommend any of them. But for personally, for me, I, I really enjoy using SEM Rush, and I spent a lot of time following their training videos in the academy section, and that's what taught me most of what I know. There's a few extra bits that I've sort of learned as I go along, but yeah, the academy section of the SEM Rush training guides I, I've, has really helped me. And is that something that you have to be a paid u- user to access? I think you have to be a paid user on SEM Rush, but you don't pay any extra on top of that. Okay. But don't quote me on that. <laughs> so aside from the Academy, what else do you love about SEM Rush and what does it help you do to get you to those right words? So I'll have a rough idea of recipes that we've created or recipes we've tried in a restaurant or abroad and we're we go oh oh, we could make that we could do this and then I will take whatever the recipe is and I'll type it into the SEM rush keyword search and from there I just jump around all over the place it's like a rabbit hole you just trying to find things that I can rank for and that people are actually searching for because what what I call the recipe might not be what other people call the recipe and what people are searching for. So on SEM Rush, there's, first of all, I check that it's informational intent that they're, they're asking for, and that would be the recipe information they're looking for rather than uh, commercial or, you know, there's different, there's uh, different intents that people are searching for. So I make sure that it's informational because that tells me that people are looking for information of how to make the recipe. And then from then I will look at the global volume of how many people are searching for that recipe. I look at the global, but because we're based in the UK, we do tend to look mostly for the UK traffic because we find it easier for us to rank for. American, Canadian, Australian volumes, I will look at too, because especially American, you get a lot a lot better RPM than what we can get in the UK. But we tend to rank better for the UK recipes or the UK search intent. So yeah, I, I will look at all of them. And I'll look at, but yeah, generally, I will just go with the whole picture and see 
whether I can rank for it. Because under, underneath the volume is the keyword difficulty. And for me, this is the most important part to look at because there's a number, it's a percentage it gives you from one to 100. And that, that basically tells you whether you will rank and, and it's possible for you to rank. So for me, that number's very important because if it's too high, I won't even bother trying because I know that I won't get up there. On occasion, though, like I will notice that I'm ranking really well for something that I shouldn't be ranking for. Do you ever find that? And then how do you handle that? Do you try to align other topics? Yeah, yeah, definitely. We've, I mean, we, we tend to do really well for, for roast dinners and curries as well. And so we tend to find, like you just said, we, anything with curry or roast in the in the keyword we will tend to do well for because they're all they all link in together but yeah there will be occasional one where I think wow where's that come from but I will make sure that I can also rank for other similar things because when we when we do a cook day we we won't just do one recipe we will do about five recipes at once oh nice yeah if if there's one that will come up and like you say I think oh how am I going to rank why why is that coming up then I will tend to look at other things similar to that recipe and then some of them might be really high and I think, well, no, that's not going to happen then. So yeah, I think that's how I'll deal with that. Okay, so what else with keyword research and once you're in the tool, like is there anything else that you would point out about using that tool or just kind of keyword research in general? Yeah, so I think for me, when I'm looking, the volume I would look at is at least 1,000K or well, thousand, sorry, one k for the volume, and then the difficulty. I would always go below fifty, as low as I can, but never ever over fifty. And that's what I will. That's what I will try and rank for. Sometimes you have to go a little bit longer with your your keywords and add a few extra words. Like um, we got slow roast lamb because we couldn't rank for roast lamb, so we just added slow roast lamb, and then we can rank for it. So yeah, we do things like that. And then I'll say I save them from SEMrush. You can save them into your keyword manager, and it's a, a list where you can save all your keywords. I think I've currently got about two thousand keywords in there. Oh, wow! Because because I just love doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd rather I'd rather sit there finding keywords than watch TV, to be honest. So so for me, when I'm not doing anything, I just really enjoy going in and trying to find new recipes and new ideas that I can cook based you know I do have ideas of what I want to make or we go somewhere and try something and I go I want to make that but ultimately it comes down to the keyword research for me whether we actually do make it do you do any like I can't think of like categories batching so like do you make a certain type of recipe in batches and do keyword research on those or do you just kind of go all over the place with what you're making well, we tend to do when, when when we have our cook day, we will do about five. We tend to aim for about five posts in one sitting, and they will all be linked to each other. So, for example, the last batch that we worked on, which we're currently writing, uh, was a seafood platter, like a cooked seafood platter. So, within that, we had to cook the long, uh, longest things. So, I've done a blog. Well, I haven't. No, I have written that one. That one's on. That one's online. So we've we've done a blog post about how to cook langoustines and all about langoustines. We've also we also included a dressed crab. So that blog will come out as well. Dressed crab. A dressed crab. We also made a Marie Rose sauce, a tartar sauce, a seafood boil sauce, and then that was all on the platter, which will be another blog post. And then we also, because we had the Marie Rose sauce that we created, we made up another batch and then we made a, a classic prawn cocktail. So that was seven posts in one day that we created. So, yeah, they will all link together. And when we're posting them, so I, I, I aim to do one post a week. And so every week they will all be sort of linked in with each other. And by the time all seven of them are out, they'll all be going into each other. Food bloggers, I want to take a really quick second here to talk to you about something new that we're starting this summer. I'm super excited about it. I am loving this new movement of food bloggers who are digging into podcasting as a way to add an awesome, unique new layer to their business. I feel so passionately about this topic. Audio is so powerful and food bloggers digging into audio in the form of podcasting is going to be a huge, successful movement 
It will be a way to expand your brand into new areas that you cannot even imagine. There is an entire episode dedicated to this. So go listen to episode number 306 if you haven't already. And I promise you're going to be inspired to dig into audio yourself. As a way to support this movement, I am creating a group coaching experience starting in June of 2022. If you are interested in joining us, there are a limited number of spots available just because I want to give you all my dedicated attention. Send me an email at megan at eatblogtalk.com if you're interested. I am including an introductory rate. It's a monthly rate. If you want in, you will be locked in at that rate. Send me an email. Tell me you're interested in the group coaching for podcasters. And I can't wait to see you inside and I can't wait to see how this just totally explodes your business. All right, back to the episode. Okay, that's awesome. I love that you batch and you think through it beforehand. And do you put one new post up a week? Is that what you said? Yeah, so I aim for one. Well, we always get one new post up every week. We do one new one. And then we also update one old post with new pictures or I just make the, the like I go back at an old one where the writing might not be so good or I'll find other keywords which I didn't add before which I could now add in I add extra backlinks from new recipes that I've created update the pictures add videos add the step-by-step pictures so I I always have something to do to to the (laughs) other content there's always or or, uh, recently I've been changing all the sizes because they've Google want them bigger now on the featured image so yeah I, I think we've finished doing that now but yeah slowly we had to go through all of them Uh, making them 1,200 square for the featured image. Yeah, there is always something to do, right? Yeah, it doesn't doesn't end. (laughs) There's never an end. So your blog is fairly new, but you still feel like you can go through and update old content because I know like some newish bloggers who feel Mm -hmm. like, should I go back and update content? Even though it's not technically old, it's, you know, it's a year, two years old, but you feel it's worthwhile to go through it anyway, even if it's not that old. Oh, definitely. Yeah. No, there, there's some of our posts that they do really well. And then they sort of come down a little bit and just by adding a little bit of extra, for example, um, like frequently asked questions, I'll add that that in the bottom. I don't tend to, if the, if the post is doing well, I wouldn't change too much in the actual post because it's doing well anyway but just by adding a few frequently asked questions I find that just gives it another little boost back up again and I'll always use legitimate questions I've actually had from people about the recipe because if people are asking it I obviously haven't included it in the post but I don't like to change too much throughout the post because if it's doing well already then it's not a good idea to change it. It's amazing how much of a difference a few words or sentences can make to improve the post. I've noticed like I will take words from key search from the LSI report that you can download for each keyword and I'll incorporate those into my posts. If it's natural, I don't do like keyword stuffing or anything, but if it makes sense, I'll put it in there. And just doing that can give my post a huge boost. So I think just giving a little bit of attention can go a really long way. No, I totally agree. And 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 like you just said, I, that's what I use. Surfer SEO I use to help me with a few terms to to add. And like you say, if it doesn't if it doesn't fit, if I haven't used the ingredient or or it doesn't fit, I won't use it. I think some people when they when they use these programs, they they take it as gospel that they have to make their score one hundred percent. And that's not always the best way to go about it. I will only include it if it's something I've used. Sometimes I might write something in as a substitution, like you could use this instead of this. But yeah, I think it's it's key not to stuff with all of the keywords that you can find on on Surfer or SEM Rush. You you have to just use the ones which which are needed. Yeah, I agree with that. It sounds so unnatural when you try to force it. <laughs> yeah. So I'm curious about your niche, and if you had to describe your niche in a few sentences, how would you describe it? Well, this is a hard one because when we first started, we everyone was saying you you must have a niche, you must knuckle down and, and choose what it is you want to do and have that set niche. And for us, we couldn't decide because we love all food. There's not much we don't like, but we do love traveling and we do love trying new foods and different foods from different countries. So we started off as recipes from all over the world, but that wasn't a tight enough niche. 
And I think we've gone more down just comfort recipes and, and sometimes they can be from all over the world still. But if we do find that the British foods, where we're, maybe where we are British, we find they they do well. The, the old-fashioned sort of British recipes that we've created have done re- really, really well. And a lot of curries, the, the sort of British Indian restaurant curries, so they're similar to what you would get from a restaurant rather than what you would get from India. So, yeah, that, that tends to do really well for us. And then, like I said, roast dinners, they're very popular in England all year round, even in this crazy hot weather we've got at the moment. <laughs> So for the traffic that's really taken off and grown your site to, you know, hundreds of thousands of page views a month, what would be your top content? I'm just curious because I love hearing what takes off for each individual site, if that makes sense. So I'm just curious what those top pieces of content are for you guys. So I'm just opening my analytics now so I can give you the... The actual yeah. current top. <laughs> our top one at the moment is our. Uh, this is for the last month. Is our uh, easy uh, flapjacks? We do okay. uh, so flapjacks in England are different to flapjacks in America. <laughs> so I'm not sure if you're aware of them. The oats flapjacks are like pancakes, right? Yeah, no, no. <laughs> so in England, flapjacks are golden syrup and oats. What? So they're completely different, and and and. When when you, any, even when you're in England and you search for flapjacks, you won't get pancakes come up because obviously Google knows that you're in England and it will only show you flapjacks. But yeah, in England, our, our biggest traffic. Interesting. Is okay. From, so we get forty six thousand in the last month just on that one recipe. That is amazing. That's so great. Yeah. Our second top is uh, we've got an Italian style rice salad, which is is rice with salad and vegetables chopped up in all mixed together and that's that does really well that's I think that's been on our blog for two years now it's one of our early ones but it's always done very well in the summer because it's great for barbecues and yeah. it's just a nice refreshing lighter dish which I've just told you we do comfort dishes and that's not a comfort <laughs> dish <laughs> yeah oh air fryer recipes we do quite well for air fryer recipes okay uh, we've got our air fryer sausages air fryer bacon air fry roast potatoes they all do well and then we've got a gambus peel peel which is garlic and chili with prawns or shrimps as you would call them okay cool so yeah it's a big mix yeah. match <laughs> yeah right and i think that's good because that gives you topics to choose from so you don't have to like i feel like for a really 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 niche site you're mm-hmm. a little constricted with what you can talk about and write about and make but if you have more of an array of topics, then you have more to choose from, which is great for you, right? Yeah, that's why, yeah, with, with um, SEM Rush, I always, like I said, I've got about 2,000 keywords that we can rank for right now. So, yeah, so a lot. I need to get cooking. Right. <laughs> like I'm never going to make 2,000 recipes. Right. But yeah, we never run out of ideas. There's always something to do. Yeah. And then do you ever go over your two recipes? So one updating old and one new a week. Do you ever go over that? I'd love to. I really would, but I get too distracted. <laughs> yes, and you have a busy life. I mean, don't we all? We all we're all busy. Yeah, I, I still have my 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 full time job. Uh, Luke works at this full time, and then I homeschool my two children as well. So life does get in the way. I would love to be able to write more, but you know, the the children's education is very important to me, and I wouldn't I wouldn't want to let them down. Yeah, right. Okay. Is there anything else we should know about just building traffic through organic means, focusing on SEO? I'm not too sure. I mean, we, we, I think uh, photography is very important, having nice photos. We, I, I used to be a photographer. So for me, it come very natural for me to be able to take good photos, but having a good picture in Google um, is very important to get the click throughs. Yeah. So you said you were a photographer. Did you take any extra courses once you got into food blogging to excel your photography skills or did you just, did it come? I just, um, I was, I was a, a newborn and a child and family photographer. I had my own studio and yeah, when I, I got divorced in 2015 and when we sold the marital home, the studio got sold with it and I had to make the decision to not continue with my photography anymore. So I kept all my equipment and yeah, I got straight back into it. (laughs) When when, when food is so much easier, it doesn't move. (laughs) Right. I had a similar path as you. I used to do 
portrait photography as well and weddings. And oh my gosh, so stressful. I mean, they were so fun, but uh, when I started taking pictures of food, I was like, whoa, this is so easy. They don't talk back. They don't complain. <laughs> <laughs> they don't move. They don't move. Just, yeah. <laughs> set it up where you want it and it stays there. You don't have to ask it to smile. Right. Exactly. So, yeah, it's 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 so much easier with the photography. That, that was, I suppose, lucky that I had that skill already. Yeah, that does give you a leg up, I feel like, because so many people come into the space not having photography background or skills and kind of have to start at square one with that. So, yes, definitely that is a huge Huge point in your favor. All right. So we've covered a lot. Kay, thank you for all of this. Just to recap, like choosing what recipes you can actually rank for that you enjoy cooking, but that people are searching for, doing your keyword research, whether it's in SEMrush or Rank IQ or Key Search, or I think you mentioned keywords everywhere as well. Yeah, I still have keywords everywhere on the side. When I, if I'm just using Google, it comes up on the side I still have that there so yeah it does help that keywords everywhere still even though I have the SEM rush paid account I still use that still as well Uh, I use a bit of all I've got a rank IQ an account as well (laughs) I have my fingers in all the pies I just use a little bit of everything and yeah I I like it (laughs) I think it's smart to have a few different things and not to lean heavily on just one tool because they all offer something unique uh, Rank IQ has a very different personality than SEMrush and keywords everywhere is just kind of a simple dip in, see what's going on. You can always use Google. That's free. I mean, there, yeah, there's something different that I like about each one of those. And I think that's yeah, smart. That's, to, why I'm, that's why I've got a subscription to all of them. <laughs> yeah. I think it's really smart to do that. And the subscription, I think SEMrush is pretty a pretty hefty investment. But if you really like it, like you do, then it's worthwhile. I definitely think it's worthwhile. Yeah. It was, before that, I was using Keyword Everywhere and, and just generally using Google. And a big turning point for me was was putting the money in to SEM Rush to to really knuckle down and get the keywords data because, because it, I think um, SEM well, SEM Rush only shows you like the org- organic traffic, and that's really what I wanted because. With organic, you know, you can go out, you can we can go on holiday for a week and we don't have to do anything. Whereas for me and Luke, social media is we we don't we don't get on well. <laughs> <laughs> so Luke, Luke does some of the social media. We do pay someone to do some of the social media for us because we just really don't enjoy it. <laughs> so for us it's not something that we're aiming. We 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 rather spend our time and invest in keyword research and SEO than anything else. Great. And then also just updating old content, even if your blog is newer, definitely invest time in going through that old content, improving little bits here and there. So I use Clarity to see how the charts are going. And if they're starting to to go down, then I will rewrite and, and to help bring boost it back up again. Obviously, some recipes are seasonal. So you some of them you do just leave. But if it's not a seasonal recipe and it tends to be going down, then I will just give it a little boost with a little rewrite. Yes, glad you mentioned Clarity. I think that is a very useful tool for just keeping everything organized and knowing what you're working on, right? Like you can do projects and organize based on separate projects. So cool. Is there anything we've forgotten before we start saying goodbye, Kate? No, I don't think so. I think that's everything. Well, thank you for being here. This was super fun. I loved hearing how you guys work through your process and how you focus on SEO to build that amazing traffic. So thank you for sharing everything today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Before we go, do you have either a favorite quote or words of inspiration to leave us with? Yep. So my quote is from Margaret Thatcher. And one of her famous sayings is, I do not know anyone who has gotten to the top without hard work. That is the recipe. It will not always get you to the top, but should get you pretty near. And for me, that is so true. And it even includes the word recipe, so it can't get even more true. So, yeah, so that's that's my quote. And I think there's a few times where you'll get hit by a Google update or, you know, we've had a few moments where we think, oh, no, is everything going to come crashing down? But we just don't give up. You've got to keep keep going on and keep working hard at it basically and you know we I think we spent six months building it up where we weren't earning anything to build it up to media vines level 
And yeah, for us, we those six months were very scary, and you're wondering if it's just going to be a big waste of time, but it, but it isn't. And we got there, and just keep working hard, and you'll, you'll, you'll make your way to the top. Love it. Thank you so much. Uh, why don't you tell everyone where they can find you online on your site and social media, etc. So we are, our website is floorsfood.co.uk and you can find us on all social media accounts at Flawless Food UK. Okay. Well, everyone go check them out and say hello. And thank you again, Kay, for being here. Tell Luke we missed him. Tell him hello. He's gone fishing. He's left me to it. Oh, that's great. Hopefully he's getting some good catches today. <laughs> so thanks for being here. And thank you so much for listening today, food bloggers. I will see you in the next episode. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Eat Blog Talk. If you enjoyed this episode, I'd be so grateful if you posted it to your social media feed and stories. I will see you next time.